to get your Bibles out this morning and uh, be praying for um, continue to pray for the uh, the Harold family, pastor and his family there in um, Oklahoma. They're uh, church today, of course, but then uh, tomorrow they're starting teen camp. So teen camp will be going on. I don't believe pastor's preaching, but he'll probably find something to do. And uh, and uh, last time I think he did a devotional or something like that. But um, but keep him in, keep the kids in prayer there. Um, uh, looks like they had a good uh, junior camp week. I had some other folks on Facebook that um, posted that they really enjoyed the preaching and 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 uh, they they you know they were they said it was just good convicting preaching and I was like who is preaching no and uh, but um, a pastor I guess did a great job he always does and um, so. Uh, he'll be, they'll be there this week for teen camp, and then they'll be coming back this next weekend. So uh, just keep them in prayer for that. Reminder that this coming Thursday, I encourage you to be here at the mi- a midweek service. We have a missionary coming, Brother Adam DePaulis. He's coming and be with us. And uh, so I pray that you will uh, be here so we can be an encouragement to Brother Adam uh, when he comes, so, so he has somebody to preach to. Amen. Um, so uh, remember uh, Thursday night. Be here for that. It's always a blessing uh, when we have missionaries come. Missionaries are my heroes, amen? Missionaries are people who have um, uh, surrendered their life to whatever God wanted them to do, whatever direction they're going to go, and, uh, and, uh, and sometimes it's not exactly where you expect to go, but that's where God's sending you, amen? Um, but it's always, it's so funny how many times that I hear missionaries will come through town and they will say, um, you know, the last place I wanted to go. You know, or I told, or they'll say this, I told God I don't want to go here or, or there, you know, or whatever. And of course, that's where God calls them to go every single time. Yeah, God, God's going to call them into service. That's going to be the place that they are like, God, just don't send me there. Amen. <laughs> I don't know why. It's, it's God's way of being and having a sense of humor, I guess, or something. I mean, I know Pastor, uh, Pastor AJ, Brother AJ Harold, he's, you know, he, uh, he, uh, he was like, I don't know if I want to go back to L.A. area, you know, growing up here and everything, but that's where God's brought him back to, amen, which is why I always say, God, please don't send me to Hawaii. I say that all the time, amen, because one of these days, you know, never, you never know, it might happen. Praise the Lord, amen, so, uh, um, amen. So we'll look this morning, let's go ahead and get started, get off of the silliness, but it's a blessing to be in the Lord's house, and I remember we got that missionary coming Thursday, and be praying for the, uh, for the heralds to come back. As they, tra- as they travel back this uh, end of the week, and for the camp this week, that God would get a hold of some of our teens' hearts, amen, that they would uh, make some decisions in their life and, uh, and make, make, make sure of some things in their life, that would be a blessing. Turn to Hebrews chapter number 11 this morning. I'm going to look at several different scriptures today and looking all over the place. Um, this might be a long message. I don't intend it to be, but it might end up being that way, and I, we might preach for a minute. So... Um, but thankfully, uh, folks at Solid Rock Baptist Tabernacle are used to that kind of thing. Amen? And so, <laughs> praise the Lord. Uh, Hebrews chapter number 11. Nothing against you, Pastor. I know you're watching. But, uh, um, but uh, uh, Hebrews chapter number 11. Uh, look, in, uh, as everybody knows this as the faith chapter. Amen? And um, the chapter of faith, and it, it, it chronicles... Uh, many of the people who, by faith, did something for God. You read there, you know, verse number four, by faith, Abel. By Verse five, by faith, Enoch. Verse seven, by faith, Noah. Verse eight, by faith, Abraham. You know, all these guys talking about faith and through faith. And verse number 11, through faith, Sarah herself received strength. And so all these things are all talking about faith. The very first beginning of the chapter, though, we're going to look at the first three verses. The Bible says, now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it, the elders obtained a good report. Through faith, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen are not made of things which do appear. By faith. Faith is believing in something and then acting as if it's already done. And it will be... It will be so done that, because you believed, amen? You, you trust in, 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 in the Lord. So I'm going to look at <clears throat> a few different faiths today, a few different faiths, because there are different faiths. 
in the Bible. And I'm not talking about denominations. I'm not talking about different churches. I'm talking about just faith in the Bible and what it talks about. We're going to look at uh, the, way that God, uh, the way the Bible describes faith today in several different passages. And I, want, and, uh, and I hope you find yourself in hopefully the last one we get to today and not in the first one we're going to talk about. If you're there in Hebrews, go to James, James chapter number 2. Just the next book over there. And look in James chapter number 2. We'll begin reading there in verse number 14. James chapter 2, in verse number 14, we'll read through verse 20. The Bible says this, What doth it profit, my brethren? Now he says, my brethren, which means he's not talking to lost people. He's talking to people who know Christ as their Savior. You are, as we know, the brethren. When we talk about, what happened there? Um, when we talk about um, the, uh, there we go. We talk about uh, our theme for this year. Pastor talked about we have the brethren, amen. We have the, uh, um, oh, got to turn it back on here. Hello. There we go. Um, so we have the brethren, and, and what, that's what he's talking about today. Now, what are the other two that Pastor talked about? I'm sorry? The stranger and the beloved, yes, the beloved, yeah. That was the other one. Let's see if we can get this thing working now. Do, 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 do. Um, so when we're talking about the brethren, he's talking about people who know Christ. I mean, not necessarily the beloved. That, we're the beloved, but the, you know, the brethren, he's talking about those who know Christ. Now he says there, verse number 14, What doth it profit, my brethren, though a man say he hath faith and have not works, can faith save him? If a brother or sister be naked and destitute of, da of daily food, and one of you say unto them, Depart in peace, and be ye warmed and filled. Notwithstanding, ye give them not those things which are needful to the body, what doth it profit? Even so, faith, if it hath not works, is dead, being alone. Yea, a man may say, Thou hast faith, and I have works. Show me thy faith without thy works, and I will show thee my faith by my works. Thou believest that there is one God, thou doest well. The devils also believe and tremble. But wilt thou know, O vain man, that faith without works is dead? Dead faith. The first faith we're going to look at today, dead faith. Faith without works is dead. Dead faith says, here's what it's saying, basically. This is, this is, this is many people that I know that claim the name of Christ, but they have a dead faith because they say, I believe, I'm just not going to act as if it will happen. Oh, yeah, yeah, but I'm not sure if, you know, if it's, God's actually going to answer my prayers. I'm not actually, actually sure if God can save those people in my family. I'm not, you know, that's dead faith. I believe, I, I believe but I'm not going to do anything to bring my faith uh, to reality, to myself or to my family. Wow. People that I know, I mean, if you are, I, I saw a, a, a meme this week on Facebook. Somebody said, if you are, I think it was Brother Hamilton down in Mississippi, he said, if you are a saved child of God, you are a Christian, then we shouldn't have to beg you to go to church. If you say you're a Christian, you shouldn't have to be begged to be in the house of God on Sunday, amen, on the Lord's day. If you say you're a Christian, you should want to be there, amen. You're, if you're not, then your faith is dead. You have dead faith today. Faith without works is dead. Do you have this kind of faith, this dead faith? I mean, sure, you believe. Yes, I, I believe in Christ. But you're not, you're not working to prove it. Paul, over in Acts chapter 9, and verse 6, he said, Lord, when, when Paul met the Lord, you know his question to the Lord was? Lord, what wilt thou have me to do? He wasn't just going to sit back. He said, God, what do I need to do? Give me something to do, God. I want to do something for you, Lord. I'm not talking about working to obtain salvation. That's already given to us. Well, all we need to do is accept it. Amen. Praise the Lord. Uh, I'm talking about working from that salvation. Amen. And doing something for God. Have you done? Uh, what have you done for the Lord since you were saved? 
since you got saved. We were not saved, we know, we know we're not saved by works, amen? We're saved by grace, by uh, the Lord Jesus Christ and what God has done for us on that cross. However, after we have received Christ as our Savior, then we need to go to work to show others that we have our salvation. The salvation of Jesus Christ, we need to be showing to other people. Great, Ephesians 2, 8 and 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is a gift of God, not of works, amen, not of works, lest any man should boast. So we need to be showing people that we have faith. So it should, like I said, shouldn't we shouldn't have to beg people if they say they're a Christian to be in church. They should already want to be in church, honestly. Romans chapter 4 and verse number 1 through 4, the Bible says this, What shall we say then that Abraham our father as pertaining to the flesh hath found? For if Abraham be justified by works... He hath whereof to glory, but not before God. For what saith the Scripture? Oh, go into the Scripture now. Abraham believed God, and it was counted unto him for righteousness. Now to him that worketh is the reward, not reckoned of grace, but of debt. A reward comes as we're following after Christ. Amen? There are going to be people that are going to get into heaven by the skin of their teeth because they just all they did was ask Christ to be their Savior, and they believed it. When they, when they did, and they meant it when they did it, but they never did anything else. And they might get into heaven by the skin of their teeth, amen? But the Bible says that we can, can, when we get to heaven, we're going to have rewards given to us, amen? Rewards for what we did after we became a child of God, after we received that salvation by grace through faith, is we're going to, we should go forth and do things for the Lord, not to be seen of men or to be men pleasers, but to uh, uh, please our holy God in heaven, Amen? That's what God is asking for each one of us to do. So when we get to heaven, the Bible says all the things that we're going to have are going to be gold, silver, and precious stone. But the Bible also tells us that in that same pile, there's going to be wood, hay, and stubble. Amen? The wood, hay, and stubble are the things that we do because we want to be seen of man. Because, oh, look at me, look at me, look at what I can do. Behold. No, I'm just kidding. But um, we can talk about those kinds of things. But the things that you do in secret, the things that you do for the Lord all the time, the things that you, when you show up and you clean the church on your own, you, you go out and you grab some tracks just on a, on a weekday somewhere and you go down the restaurants and, and pass them out to people or you walk down uh, Bellflower Boulevard and go into every single shop and hand them a, a track or ask them if they, you can leave tracks on their counter. Do something for God so that, you know, because, and not, because, not to be seen of men, but because you love the Lord. Amen. These are good things to do. That's that's not dead faith, faith that's, that's active and moving. That's a good thing to have. God says there are people, though, that have dead faith, amen? And I don't want that to be anything a part of my life. I want to have faith that, I, that can be seen, amen, that I'm at church on Sunday. You don't have to ask me or beg me to show up to church. You don't have to ask me or beg me to pray for you or, or anything like that. I will, I'm praying for you already, amen? And those are good things to have as we're following after the Lord and telling people about Christ. I shared the gospel this week with somebody a uh, lady that uh, cut my hair, and I'm going to try to go back and invite her to come to church. Her, her name is, um, uh, that's a Disney name. I can't remember what it is. She named after one of the Disney people. I can't remember what it was. Uh, I asked her about her name. Oh, Ariel. Uh, and and, uh, and uh, I asked her about her name, and her mom said, oh, my, my, when I was born, that movie was popular, and my mom loved it. So I was like, okay, I guess that's how she got it. Amen. But, uh, and so it's so funny because she'd rather, she said, I would rather be called Rapunzel. That was actually what she told me. She's like, I'd rather be Rapunzel. <laughs> I was like, okay, that's different. But um, anyway, I guess that's her favorite Disney princess. But, you know, uh, when you talk to people and you're out, uh, out and about, you know, you have the opportunity to hand them a track and invite them to church, amen, uh, giving out tracks. I'm, I, I tried to make it a habit when I go through a drive through and I'm picking up a soda or I'm grabbing a, a snack or lunch or something, I'll hand the guys at both windows a track, amen. I handed a track to the guy down here. I was down here at the, at the, um, the uh, In-N-Out, went down through the In-N-Out, and uh, the guy standing there uh, giving, uh, getting, taking your orders, you know how they always do? He's standing there. I, he took my order, and he got done. I said, here, I'd like to hand you this. And he's holding his, you know, he's got his little tablet, and he's like, what's that? <laughs> That's what he looked at me. He's like, what's that? I said, it's an imitation of my church, man. It's got some information in there. He goes, oh. And he takes it. He's like, thanks, you know, because I don't know what he thought I was going to give him. But uh, he was kind of kind of worried at the beginning. But, um, but he was happy. Once I took, once he, once he knew what it was, he's like, oh, thanks. And I said, I'm going to invite you. To, I said, it's right up the road here, amen. And so and I'm trying to make it a habit of doing that more. Everywhere I go, 
uh, uh, passing out tracks. I gra came and grabbed some more tracks and took and put them in my car so I could have a reminder they're always there and I won't run out. Amen. Faith without works is dead. Don't have dead faith. Look in 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. 1 Corinthians chapter number 15. So the first faith we looked at today is dead faith. And I pray you don't have dead faith. 1 Corinthians, but I'm, uh, you know, I fear there's, church, there's churches all over the country, even right now today, that, have, that are full of people that are, have dead faith. They're not, they're not doing it. They're, they're, they're saved and they know it, but they're not doing anything uh, to show it. <laughs> Amen. Uh, 1 Corinthians chapter 15. Um, 1 Corinthians 15. Uh, look with me there in verse number 12. Verse number 12 through uh, verse number 19. The Bible says, Now if Christ be preached that he rose from the dead, how say some among you that there is no resurrection of the dead? But if there be no resurrection of the dead, then Christ, then is Christ not risen? And if Christ be not risen, then is our preaching vain? And your faith is also vain. Then, so, look in verse 15. Yea, and we are found false witnesses of God, because we testified of God that He raised up Christ, whom He raised not up, if so be that the dead rise not. But if the dead rise not, then is the not Christ raised. And if Christ be not raised, your faith is in vain. Ye, have, ye are yet in your sins. Then they also which are fallen asleep in Christ are perished. If in this life only we have hope in Christ, we are of all men most miserable. He's talking about vain faith today. Vain faith right there. Vain faith says this. Vain faith says, I believe in Christ, but not as someone who was raised from the dead. I don't believe a person can be raised from the dead anyway. I just, I believe he's... These are the people who say, I feel he was a good teacher. Jesus was a good teacher. You know, he, he taught some good things. And, but, you know, about all, I'm not sure about the deity and all that kind of stuff. This is a person who basically is an unbeliever. Let me just say it. Let's just say it. They're an unbeliever, amen? They're lost, and they're on their way to a devil's hell. They're going to end up in the lake of fire, as the Bible says. They are doomed forever, separated from the resurrected Christ, whom they chose not to believe. Vain faith is faith that is always in vain. Vain meaning emptiness. And there's nothing there to grab onto. There's no, there's no sustenance to that. Amen. The word vain is also used in one of the Ten Commandments. Thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain. Amen. It needs to be something that you can really grab onto and understand. And God is, is, is certainly something that we should understand it is tangible in a spiritual sense. We, we can grab a hold of what He's done for us. We can know, we can read what He's done for us. We can read how much He loves for us in the Word of God. It's given us right there. Vain faith is lost faith. Don't be caught up in it for eternity's sake or for your sake. We understand that if, 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 if Christ being, is, is not raised from the dead, then everything we're doing is vain. And all the stuff that we've been doing for... The last several millennia, well, since Christ came, or actually since time started, is not worth anything if Christ be not raised. Vain faith. Don't have that vain faith. People that have vain faith, like I said, they believe, I believe Christ, but I don't believe he was actually raised from the dead or that he was really God. That's vain faith. That's vain faith. That's lost faith. You are lost if you don't truly believe that Jesus Christ came, died on a cross, and rose again because that is the whole gospel, folks. That's the good news. The death, the burial, and the resurrection of Christ. That's what we're talking about. That's what we preach. That's what we tell people about today. That's the whole crux of everything we do is to preach the gospel of Jesus Christ. Vain faith doesn't believe that. So don't have vain faith. Look in Matthew chapter number 6. Matthew chapter number 6, I'm going to read another large passage of Scripture here. Look in verse number 25. You might even know where I'm going with this one. Matthew 6, 25. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought for your life. What shall ye eat? What shall ye drink? Nor yet for your body. What ye shall put on? Is not the life 
more than meat, and the body than raiment? Behold, hey, there's a good word. Behold the fowls of the air. For they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better than they? Which of you, by taking thought, can add one cubit unto his stature? How many can think yourself taller? <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Miss Taylor's like, I wish I could. Amen. I understand. <laughs> Verse 28. And why take ye thought for raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow. They toil not, neither do they spin. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in all of his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which today is and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall, you not, shall he not much more clothe you as ye, o, o ye of little faith? Therefore, take no thought, saying, What shall we eat, or what shall we drink, or wherewith shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek, for your heavenly Father knoweth that ye have need of all these things. Then don't worry about it. God knows what your needs are. Verse 33, but seek ye first the kingdom of God. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. Take therefore no thought for the morrow, for the morrow shall take care of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. Amen? Amen? It's, uh, people, when people have a lot of, you get stressed out in your life. And there's a lot of things that you look down the road and you can see all the stuff that's going on that you've got to take care of. There's things that I, right now that I know I need to take care of back home in New Mexico before I go on to Wisconsin. And, and yesterday I got a little bit, started to get overwhelmed thinking about all the stuff I got to do and things like that. I'm not going to have a lot of time to do it while I'm home. I'm going to be home for just a few days before I move on to Wisconsin. And I'm like, what? And I, and I started to really start. And then I realized, wait, hold on a second. Hold on a second. Tomorrow's going to take care of itself. I need to, I need to focus and, and see what God would have for me today. Amen. See, we have a tendency as human beings, as we, 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 what we want to do is we want to look down the road and we want to look and see and say, look at all that stuff that I've got to do. I've got to do this, got to do that, got to take care of that. That's got, that bill's got to be paid. That bill's got to be paid. That's coming up. This is coming up. And we start to think about, and you can pull all that stuff over you like a big, heavy blanket, like the heaviest blanket you've ever even tried to have before. And it's, you pull it over and it starts to suffocate you because you're thinking about it right now in the moment. It's still in the future, but you pull it over your head and you're like, what am I going to do with all of this stuff? And you know what? That's not the way to live. Trust in the Lord. Day by day, God's mercies are renewed, the Bible tells us. Amen. Day by day is going to help you. Let's get through today. Amen. Let's follow God today. What would God have you do today? Amen. And follow God with all your heart and read his word and pray to him today. And then we take the next day. And then the next day, amen? But to look down the road and see all the stuff that you got to do and all the things that you got to happen and pull it over your head, it's just going to suffocate you and it's going to just, it, it, it'll make you down and depressed and, and uh, it'll hurt you. You know, the Bible says, look, don't worry about all that stuff. Trust in the Lord, O ye of little faith. You have little faith, amen? Again, look in Matthew chapter number 8 and verse 32. You're there, Matthew, go to 8, verse 32. I'm sorry, 23. I always say those backwards. Matthew 8, 23. The Bible says, And when he was entered into the ship, his disciples followed him. And behold, there arose a great tempest in the sea, insomuch that the, she that the ship was covered with the waves, but he was asleep. And his disciples came to him and awoke him, saying, Lord, save us, we perish. And he said unto them, Why are, you fear Why are ye fearful, O ye of little faith? Then he arose and rebuked the winds and the sea, and there was a great calm. But the men marveled, saying, What banner of man is this, that even the winds and the sea obey him? the Son of God, Jesus Christ, the Messiah. That's who that is. Amen. He looked at them and he said, Why are you fearful, O ye of little faith? Little faith. Little faith. 
when Jesus meets Peter walking on the water, we know the story. Peter goes out to walk on the water to, to find Jesus. He comes toward to meet him. And he be, but what happens? What happens as Peter gets closer to the Lord? He starts to sink. Why did he start to sink? He took his eyes off of the Lord. He started looking at the waves. He started looking at the problems around him. He started looking at all this other stuff other than the Lord. He took his eyes off of the Lord, looked on this other stuff and began to sink. And then he cried out, Lord, save me. And then, of course, Jesus reached down and pulled him up. Praise God and saved him. Immediately, the Bible says, Jesus stretched forth his hand and caught him and said unto him, what did, Peter, what did he say when he brought Peter up? He said, O thou of little faith. And he said, Wherefore didst thou doubt? This is in Matthew chapter 14, 31. He began to sink because of little faith. Not enough faith to keep him afloat on top of the water as our Lord was. All through the Bible, uh, several scriptures we're looking at. Matthew chapter 16, 8. The Bible again, Jesus says, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves that ye have, because ye have brought no bread? How many believers in Christ have such little faith? Brother Ed, I don't know if God's going to ever grow Solid Rock Baptist Tabernacle. O ye of little faith. I don't know if we can ever make a difference in Bellflower in this, in this city. O ye of little faith. I don't know if we can impact the L.A. area with the gospel from this tiny church. O ye of little faith. God can do whatever he wants. What he needs is people to surrender their lives to do what he wants them to do. Amen. To trust and obey and follow after what God would have for them to do. God looks and he says, O ye of little faith. I have all the power in the universe. I can have everybody on this street of Bellflower be saved. We can impact the entire area. We can impact the state of California. We have an impact around the world if people would get serious and stop having such little faith. There's dead faith. There's vain faith. And there's little faith. Keeping your eyes on God is what's going to help you through your life. It reminds me of the old, uh, the, uh, the old adage about the old farmer. You know those old farmers when they had the old plow and they would take their plow, and uh, you know how the, the, this is way back in the, in, the, in, the, in the frontier days. They had the plow, and you've ever, seen, you've ever been to many museum and see them, the plow is V-shaped, amen, it's got that spade at the bottom to dig into the ground, and they got these big handles, and they'd hook it up to an ox or a big horse or something, and they would get going, and they would shove that, that spade, and they would shove it into the ground so that they could t uh, till their fuel, field, the, the field all the way across. What they would do is that they would, they would get, the, get the animal started and they would pick a fence post or some kind of point at the other end of the field. Because I'm going to tell you something. Have you ever guys been just traveling somewhere, driving, and you see a, uh, you see a field of, of maybe corn or some kind of field, some farmer's field, and you ever just drive by it and you look as it's going by and you see just row and row and row and look at how straight they are? Now, these days, we have machines that make them straight for us. But back in the old days, they did the same thing. They had straight rows of, of uh, whatever they were planting. And it was straight because they picked a point on the other side of the field, and they didn't take their eyes off it. And they shoved that plow down. They got the plow going, and they started plowing the field. And they never took their eyes off of that point. And when they got to the other side, they turned around. They put the plow in again, and they picked the point on the other side, and they kept their eyes on it, and they made their way across back and forth across that field, keeping their eyes on the goal. If they ever, you can tell, and farmers used to say, you could tell where the farmer took his eyes off of that pole because you'll see a little deviation in the little field. He was going along and it's not, it's not straight all of a sudden, or there's a little crook in it or something because he didn't keep his eye on the goal that he had. You know, if we're going to follow God, we need to keep our eyes on him and not looking at all the obstacles and all the things that's going on in our life. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Peter took his eyes off God and began to sink. And when Jesus grabbed him and pulled him up and he said, why did you doubt, O ye of little faith? Just keep your eyes on me and trust. We need to do that today. Don't have little faith. So the first three faiths we talked about are, are negative. Amen. We have dead faith. We have vain faith. We have little faith. Now, little faith are people who are saved. Praise God. They just don't have a, a lot of faith. Amen. But you can grow your faith. You can get stronger. Good to be in the Word of God. 
reading the Word of God, hiding it in your heart. I'm, I'm thankful for the, uh, the memory verses that Miss uh, uh, Monique gives us each week. Amen. I pray that we try to do better. I told her, I said, I'm on Malachi. got it down. Malachi was like a month and a half ago. But that's all right. All right. I'm, I'm, I'm catching up, sort of. And, uh, but uh, she gave us some good ones this morning, 1 Corinthians chapter 1, from 4 through 8. Wow, that's four, five scriptures or something like that? No, yeah, okay, blaming me now, okay. But yes, uh, that's good. it's a good passage, amen? Taking these things and, and, and hiding them in your heart, remembering them, it's a blessing. It helps to grow your faith when you pray and you trust God, and you read His Word, and then the first time you see God answer a prayer, you see God do something in your life, you're like, wow, it works. Yes, it works. And when that happens, it grows your faith even more. Well, what else can God do? What else can God do in my life? Trust in God and keep going forward. Turn to Matthew chapter 15. You're already in Matthew. So just go to chapter 15. I want you to look here. Matthew chapter 15 and verse number 21. 21 through 28, the Bible says this, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, there's a good word, behold, Brother Reggie, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent unto the law, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Verse 25, look at this. Then came she and worshiped him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. And she said, said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat the crumbs which fall from the master's table. Look at verse 28. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter, praise God, was made whole from that very day hour. This lady came, this, this woman came to, this Canaanite woman came to Jesus and he turned her away twice. He's like, he's on his way to do something and he's testing her to see if she would just give up and walk away. And she kept coming back and she kept worshiping him and she, and she kept trying to reason with him. She kept saying, Lord, please, my daughter is vexed. And, and so when he stopped in verse 28, he says, woman, oh woman, And he says this, great is thy faith. We're talking about great faith. That means she didn't give up. She might have been rebuffed the first time, but it didn't stop her. She kept going to God. She kept going. When God doesn't answer your prayer the first time, do you give up? That's not great faith. That's little faith. Amen? When God doesn't answer your prayer the first time, you keep going back to him. You keep bringing those petitions to God. You keep coming back. And it might get too tedious to you. Amen? But God is there to hear our prayers every time we pray them. Again, in Luke chapter 7, and verse number 9, the Bible says, When Jesus heard these things, he marveled at him and turned him about and said unto the people that followed him, I say unto you, I have not found so great faith, no, not in Israel. Amen? Talking about the, the soldier that came to him. He has great faith. I have not found faith like this anywhere else. Not in Israel. He says the phrase Jesus used Uh, for this uh, soldier, this centurion that came to him, was great faith. Because great faith believes that God can do all. Amen? Great faith trusts totally in God. Great faith asks for something that goes on as if it were already done. And for the centurion, it was done that day. He came and trusted God. He said, I have a a, a servant. I have someone who's very sick. Can you help them, Lord? I, I, I have faith that you will. And... He already, he already knew, and Jesus said, I have not found so great faith. No, not in Israel. This centurion has great faith. And he answered his prayer. What a blessing to have great faith. What a great thing for the Lord to turn to somebody and talk about you, saying you have, telling somebody else about your great faith. 
Wow. How awesome would that be if God were to introduce you to somebody else and say, this is Brother Daniel, this is Miss Monique, and she has great faith, and he has great faith. Wow, that's amazing. So don't ever turn your back on God. Don't ever walk away because you prayed and God didn't answer your prayer. Continue to pray. Continue to trust. Continue to go forward. As we talked about last time, uh, was it Thursday night, I think it was, where we said, hey, listen, God's answers may not, may be yes and it may be no, and it may be wait, not right now, amen? But you will get an answer. Just keep praying. Keep trusting in the Lord. Great faith. We need folks in our churches across America today to have great faith. I encourage you guys, have great faith in God. Stop having little faith. Stop having your faith be this small. Have your faith be as great as your God is. And follow after God and do what He would have you to do. Get excited about serving God. Ask pastor what you can do around the church. What else can you do? What, what, what can I help you with? Amen? What needs to be done? I need to do something for God. I want my faith to be something that has action. Amen? Behold, I have cleaned the storage room. Amen? Behold, I've done something. Behold, behold, I have, you know, cleaned all the pews and fixed all the, the books or whatever it is. You know, we can say these things. Have great faith. It's simple enough to have great faith. We just got to trust in God. Go forward because we have a great God who answers prayer. Don't know what, when it's going to be answered? It's okay. That's up to him. The ball's in his court. We are supposed to trust and obey and keep following what he's supposed to do, what he wants us to do. Turn to First John, chapter number 5. <laughs> First John chapter number five. I love this. First John chapter five, verse four. The Bible says this: "For whatsoever is born of God, what's the next word? Overcometh." Amen. Whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world. Even our, what? Faith. You know what's going to overcome the world? Your faith. Faith in God, trusting in Him, having great faith. Not dead faith, not vain faith, not little faith. Great faith in God and what God can do in, this, in your life and in those around you. Amen? Verse 5 says, he, he that overcometh the world. And verse 5 goes on to say in the same chapter, um, who is he that overcometh the world? But he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. Victorious faith is what I'm talking about, this last faith we're talking about today. Victorious faith is overcoming faith. That's what that is. That's faith that overcomes, amen? Faith that has overcome the world. If you have this faith, then, you have, then we are uh, uh, the children of the living God, not a dead God. He's still alive. He's still doing stuff today. He's still touching hearts and lives today. Victorious faith believes that Jesus is the Son of God and that He died on a cross for your sins and that He rose from the dead and that He sits at the right hand of God the Father even today right now up in heaven looking for us to see how great faith we can have in Him. Do you believe that? Are you a child of God? Do you have the victorious faith that you need to have to, to do something in this life for the Lord? If you, if you die today, are you absolutely sure you're going to heaven? And if the answer is yes, praise God for that. Amen? If you question it, if it, maybe it's not an absolute. You need to get that right today. But if you know and you're sure you can remember a time when you bowed your head and at a repentant heart, you turned from your sins and you turned to the living God and you asked Christ to come into your heart and be your Savior, believing His sacrifice on that cross for your sins, you remember a time that you did that. Praise God. Why are you not living a victorious faith? Why are so many Christians and churches across the nation filled with people sitting in the pews, even this morning, that are not having victorious faith? What's wrong? It's not God. He hasn't changed. It's us. Amen? It's us not getting serious about serving God the way that we should. Uh, 1 John chapter 5, verse 13 says, These things have I written unto you that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life, and that ye may believe on the name of the Son of God. Believe in the name of the Son of God. Believe in Him for everything in your life. Believe that He can save your family. 
Believe that he can save your co-workers. Believe that he can do something in your life. Believe it. Amen. You can know, you can be sure that God will do something with you in this life. Amen. Having victorious faith is important. But yet we have people who walk around that are just defeated Christians. They walk around in defeat. Why? We've already won the battle. Jesus won it on the cross. Now Satan's going to come after us, yes. And he's going to oppress you as much as he can with outside forces, yes. But we don't have to live in defeat. We can live in victory. God says that faith that overcometh the world. What is that faith? What is that thing that overcometh the world? Our faith. Our faith. Amen. Trusting in God and having victorious faith today. Having the right kind of faith is important. We need people. We need our churches to be filled with people across the nation today. Churches that are filled with people sitting in the pews that are vibrant and alive and excited about serving God, excited about doing memory verses, excited about learning more about God, reading your Bible every single day, praying to God, excited about going along and taking a track and handing it to somebody at the drive-thru or to, handing it to the cashier at Walmart or doing it. Have you done that? If not, why not? You missed a chance to get the gospel out. Well, they might not take, they might take it and throw it on the floor. That's not your problem. You did what you're supposed to do in being faithful to God, amen? What they did with it is on them, amen? But we're supposed to be faithful to tell people about Christ. Uh, Pastor printed a whole bunch of these, I don't know, thousands of these, still have boxes we haven't even opened yet, and they tell right simply on the back how you can come to know Christ as your personal Savior, how you can have eternal life, and how you can have a victorious faith in God, having great faith in God. Yet people with dead faith, they don't use these. People with vain faith, they don't even care about these. People with little faith, maybe once in a while we'll throw one out. If you have great faith and you have victorious faith, you should be giving these out all the time. You should be telling people all the time. Handing them out everywhere you go. The people, the pastors should be getting calls from people in Bellflower and Gardena or wherever it is we're at, wherever it is you live, from this whole area saying, you know what, you guys need to stop handing out those track things because they're all over the place. I keep seeing them, Amen. When Pastor Quinn and I were out door knocking in, in, in Aztec in, in Bible Baptist Church, Pastor Quinn received a message, uh, a phone call one day from uh, somebody in the next trailer court over. Where our church was, next to our church, there used to be a, a junkyard. It used to be a junkyard. There was all kinds of broken cars and stuff. It had a big, tall, 10-foot high fence or 8-foot high fence, and it had the little slats in it so you couldn't see through the fence. It had all kinds of cars in it. When I was a teenager, when I was a teenager Brother Reggie, I was a kid, punk little kid. When I was 15, 16 at the church, we'd get rocks from that gravel parking lot, throw it over the fence, see if we could hear a glass crack. And if we wanted to glass, we wanted to glass. I got a glass. I got a glass. I got a breaking glass. Breaking glass. Oh, they were junked out. They were junked out. Also, but this is also the guy's business. Robinson Brothers. Robinson uh, Brothers. Uh, uh, Johnson uh, Brothers. Towing some 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 Brothers. When I got saved, when I got saved, and I started serving God, and I got really serious, got really about, serious God. about God. I remember I was thinking I was 17 years old. And my friend Jay, and my friend Jay Pritchard, in fact, he's the guy I'm going to help in Wisconsin, Brother Pritchard. Brother Jay Pritchard, Pritchard. Brother Jay Pritchard. Brother Jay Pritchard and I were both at this church in Aztec, New Mexico. And and the the the, 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 the building of our church, the building of our church has a second story, second story. And and we're on that little we're on that little porch, and we're on the we're leaning on the rail, leaning on the rail, we're looking out into this junkyard, straight across, straight across the street, because we could see over the fence. The from, 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 from the porch that we were on. Porch that we were on. And we're looking on and there, looking and, there and, and you know what I this is what, what I said to him. I said to him. We both had the same thought. You know, he said that the junkyard is just sitting there. Just sitting wouldn't it be amazing? Amazing. If that were all houses right there, right next to the church, right next to our church, there were houses. Because you know, in Aztec, there was just there's a lot of junkyards in the area. We talked about that. I was like, man, that would be cool. And we should pray about it. I mean, we pray about it. Lord, man, that would be amazing. Lord, if you could bring some, I mean, just families, just in, in houses right there. He and I prayed about that. I'm a, I think I talked to him about that. We remind him of it. And you know what happened? A few years after, we, uh, a couple years after I graduated, we graduated high school. Robinson Brothers Towing folded. It closed down. 
And I remember I was driving to the, coming to the church one day, uh, coming to help clean the church. And I look across, and I see this humongous uh, 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 tractor, this big old forklift, biggest forklift I've ever seen in my life. Had those big old long forks on the front. It was, one of the, it was a car mover is what it was. What it was, it was going, it was putting those forks underneath these big cars, it was lifting them up, and it was loading them on to a big uh, a flatbed 18-wheeler um, that was sitting there. A couple of them were sitting there, and they were loading, they were flattening these cars, and they were loading them up on these, and they were taking them. I was like, what's going on? So I went over there and asked, them, hey, what's going on? And the guy said, oh, they, they, sold the, they, they sold their business, and they're cleaning all this land up. I'm like, who bought it? He said, some developer, they're going to put a trailer court there. They're going to put houses in there. They, put, they built, they, and they, 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 they knocked down the fence on two ends. They built roads right off of our street. Our, our church was on Elm Street. It went straight across. It used to dead end right there at the junkyard. They tore that fence down, and they built the road right into there. They put two roads off of that, and they put it, I think, when I counted one day, I think there were 38 spaces. Or no, 42 spaces, because we remember there were two on the end. So 42 homes, 42 families just dropped right next to our church. It's amazing. Having the kind of faith that you could do, that God could do something like that. That boosted my faith. I was like, I remember praying for this. And I never thought it would happen because Robinson Brothers was a staple in the community for decades. They had been there forever. I was like, they ain't leaving. They ain't going anywhere. Nope. They got a good deal. They sold the land and somebody came in there and put a bunch of trailers in there. Even today, there's a bunch of trailers sitting over there. Still people coming in, all this, and, and there's always people there that we can invite and come to church. Right here, where we're at in, in, in Bellflower, there's people all over. And I'm thankful Miss Gina invited a lady in there to Miss Cherie that we'll continue to pray for her. We hope that she might show up today. But she didn't. That's okay. We'll keep praying for her. Maybe she'll come, she'll come one of these days. But that's a... Yes, and her son Noah. That's right. But we'll keep her in prayer. I'm thankful Miss Gina inviting her to come. And that she showed up on Thursday night. She showed up late, but she was here. And we were able to pray with her, and she was able to meet some of us. There's people all up and down, people that you know. There's people up and down this street. There's people at businesses that you go to, the barber shop or the diner that you're at. You can invite the waitress to come to. You know what? You can pray, and you can help and see what God will do. Have that great, victorious faith that, is, uh, that we already have been given in Christ Jesus, but yet... So many Christians walk around with vain, dead, or little faith. I encourage you this morning. Have that victorious faith today. God can do whatever He wants to do. But let's get serious about serving Him and living victoriously. Him that overcometh the world. Who is He that overcometh the world? But He that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God. What overcomes the world? Our faith. Victorious, amazing, vibrant, living faith in God. I encourage you this morning. Get serious about it. Serve God victoriously. Every head bowed and every eye closed this morning. Every head bowed and eye closed. I'm going to pray. I'll give you a chance to come to the, to the altar. Some have already come. Praise the Lord. Mm-hmm.